Well, how much time you got, John? You want <laughs> the long version? I have actually um, typed up into a five or six part series that will eventually be posted on our blog. Okay, so the short version. I was uh, a contractor, right? And we did uh, room additions and porches, sunrooms, decks, fences, that kind of stuff. So I'm at a guy's house, and um, I'm in his house talking to him about something to do with the project, and he's trading. And uh, I, w I wasn't real interested at the time. He showed me some of the stuff he was doing, and I thought, well, that looks pretty cool. But I had a project to do. And anyway, <clears throat> time passes, and I start thinking about this guy and this trading and that he was doing. And I thought, you know, that sure looks a lot easier than what I'm doing. So I called him, and he hooked me up. Uh, with this uh, trade room that he was in and uh, which was $500 a month $550 a month um, so I joined this trade room and I kind of got bit by the bug just like everybody else but my intention was to get out of my construction business and because you know everything about that business is a pain in the butt. So I thought, well, life could certainly be easier if I could just day trade and make a bunch of money. And it looks really easy because I'm watching price go up and down. All I got to do is know which way it's going to go. That seems pretty easy. And we got the whole internet with information to tell me how to do it. And I'm smarter than most people, so I'll figure it out. And within six months, I can sell my construction business and do nothing but trade and play golf. So seven years later, I had an epiphany that, you know what? I'm sitting here looking at all this stuff that I have, 12 monitors I had at that time, to help me place one successful winning trade. And I realized that I'm no more likely to win the next trade than I was the first day I tried day trading. I realized I had a lot of information that often overlapped with each other. So the information, although each piece of the information was good, well, what do you do about the overlaps? What do you do about the gray areas? You know, how, to, how, how do you put them all together to create a successful day trader? And uh, that, was, that was a big epiphany for me. Of course, at this point in time, after seven years, I had blown out several trading accounts quit trading for a few months, then I got sucked back into it, and uh, the whole cycle would start over again. So I kept doing the same thing over and over again. I kept thinking I was doing it different because I'm trying different things, you know, or whatever. Um, but essentially, in hindsight, I just kept repeating the same mistakes. So then a whole bunch of stuff happened. I'm going to shorten this a lot. Um, this epiphany that I had helped me to rethink this trading thing. And I was about to quit. I mean, what I thought was going to be permanently. But uh, I rethought it and, and thought, you know, okay, so what am I best at? Well, I'm a contractor, and contractors are best at problem solving. 
That's what contractors do. That's it. People hire us to solve a problem that they have on their house or whatever. You know, if you have employees, you have problems and you have to solve those problems. If you have suppliers, you have problems. You always have to solve those problems. So what I, my, my best skill was problem solving. But I never approached trading as a problem that I needed to solve. So I went after it that way. So I have this series of ahas. <laughs> have this this series of ahas that we talk about um, in here occasionally we did one yesterday and um, each aha that I had would help me kind of drop some of the preconceived assumptions that I had about trading when I started trading and, and then once I was able to do that, then I could see more clearly. And then I have another assumption or expectation. And eventually I started to gain some traction by approaching this trading thing as a problem I had to solve. And totally forgetting about everything else. And... Uh, Again, I'm, I'm skipping a whole lot because this is a long story. I'm trading with a group of guys in uh, Skype. And um, we had met in trade rooms over the seven years that I was sucking as a trader. And, and they all sucked. And we all decided, well, joining these trade rooms isn't helping. So let's just not pay for the trade rooms and let's just suck together on on Skype. And we'll share with each other the trades we're taking. And um, occasionally share our screens or whatever. And as I'm working through this, I start getting better and better. And my trades are getting better and better. And they start noticing the trades are getting better and better. And that was the evolution of what became the intentional trader. Because as it turns out, we were just a bunch of guys hanging out together. And then it became me teaching them how to do what I was doing. And so Skype was kind of cumbersome. And uh, back in those days, it was a, a service called Omnovia. I think it's called something else now. And so I spent, I want to say $19 a month. And open a room where I just projected my charts, basically what you're seeing here, just so I could teach those guys what I was doing. Um, and then they started inviting their friends and family, and it turned into a whole thing. And now I'm spending more time teaching than I am trading. So I thought, well, I got to, I got to do something. And uh, so I created a training program called Trader RX. And that's really where a lot of the stuff started changing for me as far as being able to teach because I needed to figure out what happened and every step that happened to get me to where I was at that point in time. Because a lot of things happened that Maybe I realized at the time that it was important, but also a lot of things happened that I never really realized was important until I thought back on it in hindsight. I'm like, well, if this did this and then this was this, then why did I do this? So I would go back and I'd think about it. I go, yeah, I remember that. And that's what I did. And so I'd start writing about that and I'd put it in the, this training program. So when I started teaching was when my trading took off. I got so much better at trading 
as I was teaching it because I was filling in a lot of the gray areas that I didn't realize I had. I had to explain to them, but I'm like, well, how can I explain it when I don't completely understand it? So I'd have to think through it. And that was the, the first Omnovia room. That's where I basically decided that the intentional trader started, although I don't think I had a name at the time. Um, shortly thereafter, I came up with a name, and uh, it was January of 2010. So I was successfully building and growing my trading account for the first time in seven years and then started teaching other people to do it and as i did that my account grew even more and faster so there's a lot more to the story but essentially that's where we're at today. Uh, I couldn't even say how many because I bought parts and pieces of things also. Um, and then I spent a lot of time deciding that all the people trying to sell me things were crooks. Um, and that the only thing that... Uh, I don't even remember. Um, the only thing that um, I could count on was myself. So I started down the path of developing my own trading system, which I think many of us have done. Of course, initially that didn't go well. This is during the seven years of failure. Again, this isn't a, a, a linear story just like you watch a 30-minute sitcom. There's a lot of things that happen that overlap with each other, so it's kind of hard to tell it in a linear fashion unless I write it all down. Um, but certain epiphanies happened at the same time as others. And while I was working on a different thing, I might have discovered something else. I'm struggling with TradeStation on something, and I can't even remember what it was. So I thought, well, a lot of people are using this Ninja Trader thing. Let me go look at that. And I didn't want to because, you know, we all get cozy and comfortable with our trading platform. But I found something that coincided with something that I had thought of not that long ago. And that was that anything you're going to get good at, you better be practiced at. So I started thinking, because I'm my, I have a sports background, I started thinking about sports. And trading is a very participatory endeavor meaning that I'm competing right this is an auction and I'm competing for price here I'm competing with other people that are buying and selling so I want to approach this like a competition so if I'm going to do that I better be practiced and I better be better than the other guy Not only that, but you don't do it to learn how to do it and then stop. Like pro athletes, do they get good at catching a football and then they stop showing up for practice? No. They're constantly and continually honing their skills. It's part of what they do. It's part of who they are. They don't just show up for games. They put in the hard work so that when it is game time, everything is pretty much automatic. So I thought, well, how can I do that with trading? 
Well, at the time I came up with that, I thought of that. I was using TradeStation, and I'm like, well, can't practice on TradeStation. What I think is practice up until that point in time, I think sim trading is practice. You know, because you're in simulation and you're not using real money. So that's practice. But I started thinking, man, if I could remove all of these slow times and practice the trades and only the trades, instead of taking two, three trades a trading session, I could do 20 or 30 in the same amount of time. What would that do to my um, education, my my uh, my consistency, my knowledge, my um, uh, becoming, you know, more competent up to the point where you become unconsciously competent, which is exactly what happens with these pro athletes or even college athletes, high school athletes. Uh, when I was uh, playing football in high school, we were in the championship game. We were doing the same drills before the championship game that we would do before the, you know, uh, the very first day of practice. To build on that unconscious competence. So you just react when it's time to react. You don't have to think. So the practice part, absolutely, had a lot to do with with the success. And I, then I started realizing, oh, all these things I thought I knew, I've got to go back and, and rethink all of them. So I did, and I come to th start thinking, you know, because we're all human and we all have the basically same human nature, although different characteristics, we still have the same human nature. We tend to act and react the same way to things. And that's the smoke and mirrors in day trading. The big boys know that we're going to always react the same way to things. So they figured out how to take our money and 90% uh, of 95%, whatever, end up getting all their money taken and they leave, which is good for me. I'm happy to take their money. So my mission then was to, when I create this trading system that I was starting to get pretty good at, um, the indicators that I had were pretty complicated. I had uh, paid a guy to develop a lot of indicators. But to try to teach it, because I developed it, I could put them on the charts and I could see the information I needed to see and I could trade it but I was, as I was trying to teach it to people I realized that's going to be hard and that's and it's going to be confusing so I went back to the drawing board to try to create what I decided I was going to do was create what's called heads up indicators and my my motivation was the heads up displays that were originally created for fighter pilots they only put the information that's needed for quick decisions up there on the windscreen. Of course, now you see it in cars and other stuff. But I didn't want to have to look away to make a trade decision. I didn't want to have multiple charts, multiple time frames, multiple indicators, a bunch of wavy lines, um, a bunch of shades of gray of conditions. So I went back to think through how I could do that. That's
basically what you see here now. It looks very simple. But if I put, I used to do this in webinars many, many years ago. I took the information that's being shown to us and I used some more typical indicators, or at least whatever I could find that was similar. And I would build a chart with those indicators and it was just the most ridiculous thing. You can hardly even see the candlesticks because there's so many things going on on the screen, which is exactly what I didn't want. So all up, my mission is just to hone what we're already doing. I I was talking yesterday. I don't know if you were here yesterday. George hasn't been here in a while. Um, and he just came back recently. Um, jumped in yesterday after being gone for a long time and was killing, the, just, just knocking the trades down like he'd never left because we don't change things. We have a system that works. Tuning, yeah, potentially, but I'm slow to tune things also. But what I will do is continue to study what's happening just before price stops and changes directions. What information can I add to add confluence to help us to understand that price is going to stop and change directions. So that's pretty much, that's it. And that's my story. Oh yeah, they all test out in uh, back testing. Not all, but eventually and you run that first back test report and you get so excited oh my god look how much money i'm gonna make and then you put it on a live charts and it just doesn't really just doesn't really play out the way the uh back testing and uh there's a real simple reason for that Back testing sucks. <laughs> that's it. That's the that's the reason. So John, I didn't come into this with any any credentials at all. I was never a floor trader. Um, I don't have my series whatever. Um, never worked on Wall Street. I'm just a regular guy that had a job. Uh, that was looking for an easier way to make a living. Now, if you have some specific questions, John, uh, um, something about that story that you need, you need some of the gaps filled in, I'll, I'll be happy to do that. And that was the short version. Uh, actually, no. And that's because I've, I've, I learned even more about human nature and about what makes people tick as it relates to trading. Um, and no matter what I do, I can't control what other people do. So here's an example, okay? We have tools in our ProTrader program, and one of those tools is a, is a replay of today's session. And every trading session we've ever had, we load it up for people to then watch to help them do their homework. It's part of the, the thing that they're supposed to be doing, but they don't. But I can tell, I can't tell who has watched the videos. I mean, it's a big part of, of practicing. It's a big part of doing your homework. It's a big part of what it takes to be a professional. So we load these up every day. We provide them the tools. 
and then it's up to them to decide to use it. And I can tell how many people are and are not using those tools. There should be hundreds every day, but there's not. So I can't control that. I know that's what works. I know if you use that tool along with the other tools and you use market replay and you practice your trading, you're going to be a better trader. I know this. I teach it to people. People go, yep, you're right. It works. And then they stop doing it. So my teaching is only lighting a path. I will show you with a path. You got to walk down the path. Now, something happens and you veer off the path. You have to let me know, hey, Tony, I'm out here in the ditch. Can you help me back to the path? And I'll help you back to the path. But I'm not going to do it for you. I can't guarantee anything. You know, I could I could work at a golf store and I could sell you the same golf clubs that, I don't know, who's the best golfer in the world now? I don't even know anymore. Um. But I could sell you the same golf clubs that he uses, and I say, look, here's the best tools in the world. And they're going to say, well, with and, and your question to me would be then, well, can I join the PGA Tour if I have the same golf clubs as these guys on the PGA? I mean, I've hired the same coach. I've got the same tools. Why wouldn't I be able to play in the PGA? Doesn't make any sense to me. I've got the same stuff. It's the same thing with trading. That is forthcoming, Francis. It'll be part of the fast forwards that we'll be doing during our sessions like we did yesterday. I would use more music analogies if I knew how to play music. But they're exactly the same. Same analogies. So that's an interesting question that you asked, John. Did the people I was teaching see success? So the assumption is all they needed was the information I had to be successful. And that's a that's a, a natural and logical assumption if you don't really understand what it takes to become a consistently successful trader. Ninety five percent of the people don't really understand. Now, I'm probably not telling you what you want to hear. And I understand that. Most people will gravitate to somebody who says what they want to hear or who's talking about things that they already believe and therefore they're confirming that, yes, this is doable. For example, YouTube videos, guys on YouTube saying this is the easiest is I'm finally releasing my big secret to becoming a billionaire trader. Um, I, I, it's being released now for only $10,000. You can buy this and you'll immediately be a winning day trader. Well, that's what we all want to hear. So you will look at the video play, you know, the number of times a video gets watched on YouTube. The more outlandish the claim, the more times that video has probably been watched. They're telling us what we want to hear or confirming for us what we already believe. And, uh, and we have a hard time getting away from that. So I use this analogy. Analogy. I think in analogies, unfortunately, or fortunately, to make it easier to understand. But again, I use my own background to 
come up with analogies. It just they just pop into my head. So this analogy, and this will come up in an aha sometime. If I come into trading with certain assumptions and expectations. Now, remember my story. I met this guy and I started thinking about it and I started thinking this trading thing looks pretty easy. I just need to know a few things and then I can sell my business and I can day trade for a living. And I don't see any reason why I couldn't make as much money as I want. Because if I know which way price is going, I can trade as many dollars as I want and make and, and you know exponentially increase my income. So this is a, an assumption, an expectation that I had about trading. Now, I'm going to try to build my trading career around this. So I went on a seven-year hunt for the shortcut that was going to make that happen. So the analogy is I show up to a job site, construction job site. The homeowner there has already poured the foundation and they want me to build a house on it. And they think it's a pretty good foundation. I go, no, look, this foundation is not level. It's broken. It's sinking on this corner. They did everything wrong. No, 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 it's fine. Just build the house. It's concrete. It's fine. Down on the ground, it's all good. And I say, no, I, I'll, I'll build a house on it, but it's never going to be right. It's going to, you're going to have problems with this house forever. And the problems will show up in places where you're not looking. For example, you're in this house that's been built on a faulty foundation and you've got these, these roof leaks. You just can't fix the freaking roof leak. Every time you fix one, you end up with another roof leak somewhere. So you're studying the roof and you're out there. You're up on the roof putting bubble gum everywhere where there's a roof leak. And you just can't figure out why, why, what's going on here? Why? Uh-oh. Heck, damn it. All right, so there was a trade. I, I'm looking right at the roof. The roof is the problem. It's leaking. Why can't I figure out how to stop this roof leak? Well, the problem started a long time ago. The problem started on that foundation and continues to because the foundation is shifting and it's broken and it's doing all these things, which is causing the footings to shift, which is causing the the bottom plates, which is causing the corner of the wall, which causes the gutter to pull away from the soffits, and then the you know, then the you know, one thing after another after another happens all the way from the foundation up to the roof. And the sign of the problem is the rain coming in. But that's not the problem. So what I do, what we do here, is we go, okay, so I know you don't want to hear this. But the fastest way to fix your problem is to go back to the beginning and let's fix the foundation. And then we'll work our way back up. Okay, we're going to fix the foundation. Then we're going to fix the bottom plates. Then we're going to fix the studs. Then we're going to fix the, you know, the the cornish, the the soffits and the fascia. And then we're going to fix the roof decking. And then we're going to fix it. And we're going to work our way up. That's the fastest way. But nobody wants to do that. Because it doesn't seem fast. That seems like the slow way. Oh, screw that. Give me some more bubble gum. I just want to stuff it in the holes in the roof. And 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 then start making a bunch of, of money, you know. There's got to be a faster way. Well, there isn't. 
the slow way is the fastest way. Yeah, well, to me, only two years, you're relatively new at this. You have a lot of other mistakes to make two years into the mistakes you're making. I have taught traders that have been at this for 20 years before they finally got to a point where they were willing to hear what I had to say. Watch the YM. Let's see if we end the ES. Let's see if we get a rock star. So I'm going to buy it if we get a rock star on the open of the next bar. Uh, one of one or both of them, depending. And neither of them, so keep waiting. So who struggled the longest in the room here today before finding us? And making us your trading home. Um, I know we've got some 20 year people, but I don't know that we have them in the room here today. How long? How long did you struggle before you found us? I don't know. No, you're 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 relatively new. Also, four years is nothing. And I know there's those of you out there that way over 10 years. You may not be here today, though. Oh, don't be ashamed. No, oh, no, 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 no. You know, it just takes what it takes to get to that point. And you're ready to hear it. That's it. It's kind of like. You know, being an alcoholic or a drug addict or whatever, you gotta hit, you gotta hit bottom sometimes before you're willing to consider there's another way. Well, TJ's one. <laughs> Not only does he make a living trading, he does it for other people too. Yeah, so a lot of them do. You know, I've been at this since 2010, right? A lot of them don't really come into the trade room. A lot of them do on a semi-regular basis. I'm here to help. Um, a lot of times I'm, I'm here to help just with the boredom. You know, some something to listen to, something to do, somebody to help you confirm trade setups that you might see and need some explanation of or whatever. So again, I've been here doing this exact thing since 2010 every day haven't missed many days I've missed a few but not many so here's the thing John that um, if if we were you know if you wanted to come hang out with us and and uh, do what we're doing I need you to do something the first time uh, first time the first thing quit thinking about money Quit talking about money. Quit thinking about making a living. That's, again, what you're doing now is you're asking the guy selling you the golf clubs if you can make a living on the PGA Tour. Have you ever sold golf clubs to somebody who's making a living on the PGA Tour? It's the same question. So... One of the problems and one of the things that that the big boys that take all our money every day have already figured out is that we think too much about money while we're trading. Trading is not about money. Trading is the net result, just like any other job. Right? Watch the uh, GC. We either need to get down to this support line or... Get a rock star, or preferably both. Okay, got down to the support. I bought it. And I'm out. 
So I lost the trade. So what did I do wrong, John? Nobody answer him. Nobody answer me. I want to know from John what I did wrong. Been here in the room long enough to where you should be able to tell me what what I did wrong. Uh, no, there was a well. There's one right there, but I'm not trading that one. Um, nope, because it was it's what's called a speed tick setup. It didn't require the star. So it was a losing trade, so I obviously must have done something wrong. You've been here long enough. You should be able to tell me. So what I'm doing to you right now is what the other trade rooms and people selling trading systems and stuff will also do to you. I've I've led you down a path that has a dead end. I, there There is one answer. Now, I know that you assume that because I'm a professional trader, I shouldn't lose trades. There should be no losing trades if I'm a professional. Now, you may intellectualize. You go, no, no, the professionals lose trades. But I was able to fool you simply by saying, what did I do wrong since I lost that trade? So I just threw some smoke and mirrors out, which is the exact same thing that those guys that are trying to take your money from you. Um for other trading systems and whatever that aren't that aren't telling you the true story about trading they're gonna throw out some smoke and mirrors and confuse you and it's gonna sound really good all right everybody tell john my answer what i lost a trade what do you mean i did nothing wrong how could i have lost if I didn't do something wrong, how was that possible? So, John, I have a trade plan. It's essentially my job description. I have no leeway. I have no discretion on whether to take a trade or not take a trade. I am the lead trader of my trading business and my job. My only job while I'm sitting here trading is to execute that trade plan to the letter. That's my only job. If I'm having emotions, if I get confused, if I'm trying to decide what to do, I need to shut down and go home. Just call it a day. If I can't simply execute the plan, I shouldn't be doing this job. The plan says I should have taken that trade no matter what. Because I took that trade, I did nothing wrong because I executed my trade plan. Some trades win, some trades lose. Hopefully, more trades win than lose. That's the way it works. You scratching your head. Laura, how long have you been trading with us? <laughs> so uh you're not really stupid are you Laura? i mean you wouldn't come back to a trade room over and over and over again for four years if this wasn't working for you would you george you wouldn't keep coming back if it didn't work, would you? I'm going to say you've been here longer than four years. I'm going to go with six, maybe seven, something like that. Murph was here yesterday. I think he's got he's the winner. He's been here almost 10 years, uh, but he's not here today. I think he was. So, if this didn't work, I mean, why would these people keep coming back? And I would like to think it's because of the comedy 
<laughs> well, there's that. I give your life, I give you something to, to look forward to every day, whether it's good for you or not. So you can continue doing what you're doing, John. Occasionally, people do find their way down the dark path to the other side. And, and we're always here and hope the best for you. Um, we've had many, 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 many people come here, hear what I have to say, watch our trading, leave, go find another path, and then come back. Because I'm not offering you riches. I'm not offering you, you know, a vacation lifestyle. I'm offering you the promise of a lot of hard work. Well, that's not all that appealing. <laughs> I will not. I will not. Because that's not true. It's a lot of hard work. But it's absolutely worth it if you want to live a lifestyle that doesn't have you go sitting in traffic, you know, to earn a living every day. A lifestyle, I don't know if you know, you probably don't know. I'm actually in an RV right now. We travel the country in an RV. And as long as I have internet, I can do that. So I have a different lifestyle that I can lead because of day trading. Am I rich? Nope. But I live the lifestyle that I want to live. I mean, if I was going to get rich at day trading, I'd probably have done it in the first six months, right? Because you can just, once you know the secret, you can just trade as much money as you want, and you're going to win, and you can just make as much money as you want as fast as you want, and then you just retire, right? So why would I be at this for so many years if you don't just get rich right away? I mean, it's work. It's a job. It's not an easy job. And it's not a job that's for everybody. So I'm also going to ask you to ask yourself, do I really want to do this job? I mean, there are easier jobs. There are easier ways to make a living. Lots of them. I think I've talked to a lot of people out of day trading also. Instead of saying, oh, this is so easy. You can... You can make them for just just pay me a bunch of money and I will make sure you make a fortune. Right. So the goal is to do something simple, something small, easy to do, and with practice, your goal is to become the best in the world at that thing and only that. Specialized. All those other types of trading that you've looked at, all those other systems, all those other indicators, throw them in the trash. Do one thing. Do it better than anybody else in the world. And until you practice, and practice, and practice, and practice, and work at it, I've already, I've already set the, the, the standard pretty high because I've been doing this for longer than anybody. Um, but your goal, your mission should be to become a better trader than I am. And I would have nothing more than that. And you don't know what to do about what, whether to be a day trader or not. The time for some introspection. Maybe it's not for you. Not all jobs are right for all people. I promise you I could not be an accountant or a bookkeeper. Nope. Not for me. So I wouldn't even try to be one. What got you into day trading to begin with? And, I, and think about this. What was it that appealed to you and thought, I'm going to try to do this for a living?
Well, what gave you the impression that it was there was a lot of money in it? I mean, there's money in any job. If you do the job, you make money. So there's more to it than money. Although that's a bad word around here. You know why money's a bad word? It makes good people do really stupid things. Me included. So part of that epiphany that I had and the ahas that I had was that me and money did not have a good relationship. So the less I can think about it, the less that my job has to do about money, the better I can be if I can just remove money from the the you know the the job that I have each day. I mean, ultimately, my construction business was about what? It was about making a living, which is money. But when somebody hired me to design a project for them, do you think every time I drew a line, <laughs> I know you're laughing, Jeffrey, but yeah, I used quarter inch graph paper for a long time before I learned chief architect. Um, but I would draw a line and think, oh, that line's gonna make me $10. If I could, if I get to build this, I can make, you know, a hundred dollars, a thousand dollars, fifteen thousand dollars. If I'm, no, that's not what I'm doing. I'm I'm designing something to solve a problem for somebody. If I do a good job, then I'll make money. Trading is unlimited. How? Trading not unlimited. another faulty assumption limited by your resources <laughs> so we're gonna I'm not saying you can't but you can earn a lot at any job or or let's say any business that you want to start why couldn't you earn a lot if you own the company why can't you earn a lot? What What's limiting you? So what you're telling me is what I'm hearing is that this is pretty easy. The other jobs, the other careers, the other businesses, too hard. Can't make a lot because it's too hard. But trading... Well, that's different. When day trading is no longer about money, then you'll know you've taken a big step in the right direction. Day trading is a job. That's all it is. You want you want some honesty here? More more honesty here? If I didn't have you guys to sit here and talk to every day, or the intentional trader stuff to do and you know later in the day when I work on that stuff. If I didn't have that and all I did was day trade, I'd probably find a different job. <laughs> hey, what makes you think I'm not taking drugs and drinking anyway? <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, how do you usually get money if it's not day trading? How do you do how do you get money, John? Yeah, that's good. You know what? And I talk a lot. And I never know. Every one of you will have a different epiphany to get you to come around to this particular place where we all are. I've heard I've heard a lot of different things when, when people tell you, Hey Tony, you know, when you said this that really rung true to me. And I, I may have just been babbling pretty much like I've been doing all day today and didn't even realize what I said. But it, every one of you hear it 
at a different time or in a different way and suddenly the light goes off or or on the light comes on that that goes off Well, why do you, I mean, you don't have to work shit work. Any job is how you make money to live. That's, that's it. Now, other than investing, and you just go park your money and you hope it grows, you're going to have to have a job. And that's what day trading is. This is not gambling. This is not fun. It's not exciting. None of that. It's what I do every day. I get up. I've I've always think of that old commercial. I got probably back in the 70s. Of the Dunkin' Donuts guy. He gets up early in the morning. Like I do. And he's walking around getting dressed. Getting his breakfast. Going, gotta make the donuts. Gotta make the donuts. Gotta make the donuts. And that's kind of my mantra when I get up in the morning. And I... I'm going to sit down here to start trading. I got to go trade. Got to go trade. Got to go trade. It's just what I do. Yeah, George, I would say, by and large, that's the one that most people had their epiphanies with the two ticks to paradise thing. Got to trade the markets. Got to trade the markets. I haven't done that webinar in probably two years. I should probably do it again. All right, Vern, have a good one. Yeah, it looks like that uh, our time has come to an end here today. John, if uh, if you ever want to talk, you you can tell I obviously have things to say and opinions about things because I was once in your shoes. So I understand you and where you are more than you probably realize. And here's the other thing. Almost everybody here understands you and where you're at right now because we've all been there. You're welcome. All right, everybody have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tomorrow.